for each generation, we will display several important organisms that may or may not be susceptible to that group of cephalosporins. Cocci will be found on the left, while bacilli will be on the right. Organisms in purple boxes are gram-positives, while the gram-negatives are in the pinkish boxes. If susceptible to a particular generation of cephalosporins, the organism will lie within the green area, while those that are not will be in the red area. While there are always exceptions, we will look at the most widely accepted patterns of antimicrobial activity. And for the sake of simplicity, other types of organisms, such as spirochetes, will only be mentioned when relevant. Fifth generation cephalosporins, represented here by cephtaroline, are the only cephalosporins with coverage against methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus. Cephtaroline is also active against penicillin resistant Streptococcus pneumonia and oxazilin resistant coagulase negative Staphylococci. This gain, however, comes at a cost. It is not effective against pseudomonas. Common indications include community-acquired pneumonia and acute bacterial skin and soft tissue infections. It is also used to treat invasive infections, such as endocarditis. I will also just briefly mention that there are combinations of cephalosporins with beta-lactamase inhibitors, such as Saftolase and Tazobactam, which are active against pseudomonas aeruginosa, Bacteroides fragilis, and ESCBL-producing Enterobacter SEA. These combinations, however, go beyond the scope of this lecture. For more information, check out our full lecture on the spectrum of activity of the cephalosporin antibiotics.